I was asked to talk about um, some of my career to date and uh, some of the things uh, I thought I might have done differently. So I, I like this definition of career that you can find, a headlong progression, usually downhill and usually out of control, and that certainly dis describes the early phases of my career. So I'll be honest, you know, what I loved in the early stages of my career, I just loved being in the lab. I, you know, that was, I didn't think about much else. So the early stages, I did my PhD at Aston, I then returned to Oxford for my postdoc, and I actually worked in diabetes in the early, in the early days. There's no pressure, you know, you just went home at night, you could think about the science, but you were just a data generator, you know, the lab uh, head got the money in for you, you wrote the papers up together. It was a great life. And then reality struck. I was 31. I'd done um, two postdocs. I had a temporary lectureship at Birmingham. I'd been in three different departments, two different universities. So I'd ping-ponged backwards between Oxford and Birmingham for several years. I got a mortgage. Um, I was on a yet another short-term contract. I got a young child and no cunning plan. So what did I do? First thing, it's actually the last thing. I actually got a mentor, or actually say my head of department imposed himself upon me. So it's Ian McLennan, so Robert will know him. Uh, and he was super, and he gave me a real reality check. He said, Janet, where's your five-year plan? Where are you heading? I had to think, did I want to stay in academia? Yes, I did. I, decided, I pretty well knew that. But what did I have to do to achieve that? I had to make sure I was publishing good papers, and luckily, you know, that wasn't the problem at the time. I was publishing okay. I'd gained some teaching experience through that one-year lectureship, but I needed to up my national and international visibility, so um, Ian really said, any opportunity, if you get a chance to review grants, review papers, be on um, a grants panel, take it. Um, and that was really good advice. So even quite early in my career, I was actually asked by the BBSRC to be on one of their grants panels. Um, he said, you've got to get a personal fellowship, Janet. You've got to show that you can do it by yourself and survive. Uh, and again, I was fortunate. I, I got a Royal Society Fellowship that allowed me to set up my lab. Um, and they were great. They really let you uh, get on with things, didn't pester you too much. And, and it was a great experience. Um, working abroad is the one thing I didn't do. That's my one regret. Um, and I think thinking about you know, life balance, I should have done that earlier on because you know, with the family, it was then much harder. Um, so that's my one regret, and that other than little months here and there, I haven't had a, 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 an extended period abroad. I think getting the right location. So when I returned um, to Birmingham from Oxford, I'd originally only intended to be there for a year, and that was 30 years ago. And what's kept me there is that my research is, is really what is now called translational research, and I knew early on that's what I wanted to do. As a basic scientist, I wanted to be doing things that were close, as I close as I could get to patients. And this is where I'm located now. I'm in the new Queen Elizabeth Hospital, um, which uh, sees a million patients a year. It's the largest hospital in Europe. And we've actually got, we're actually integrated into the hospital. We've got um, basic labs here. Uh, we've got our own clinical research facility so that we can literally uh, translate from bench to bedside very quickly. And the institute is about half clinicians, half basic scientists. So we're interacting constantly. Uh, and I think that's, that's a, an important thing as well. What about the other stuff? What about my med sci life? Well, hopefully you're all decided you're going to be academic clinicians anyway, but it is a great life. There's lots of stresses there, but some fun things too, so you get to meet some famous people. So the older members of the audience will recognise Sir Cliff Richards, so he came and helped us with a lot of our fundraising, uh, so he's been great. You get to be on the telly. So I was on the telly last year with Angela Rippon in a programme called How to Stay Young, doing a thing called the Sit to Rise Test, and uh, our head of college, Dave Adams, routinely comes up to me and just says 10, because that was the maximum score you could get, and he's very pleased that he got the maximum score. <laughs> um, but try to keep a balance, so keep your hobbies. So I'm a keen runner. I don't run as much as I used to, so I haven't run a marathon since 2010, um, but I still try and get old, uh, out as uh, frequently as I can. I live on the Trent and Mersey Canal, um, so I try and get out on my boat uh, as often as I can as well. Um, keep other hobbies as well. So these, uh, this is scouting. So until two years ago, I was our Kayla, uh, and had been an our Kayla for almost 40 years. So I'd done this since I was uh, doing my GCSEs. So I think it's good to keep that balance. The only thing that stopped me was um, 
needing to get to the scout hut every Wednesday at 8.30. So I could no longer do that. But I still go out and help on the camps and things like that. So try and keep a balance. Keep the fun in your life. Don't make it all work. I think that is important. And you can get involved in political campaigns even if they don't succeed. So this was our effort to try to show that science really is um, something that, that flourishes when we work together and we don't have national and international boundaries imposed upon us. Um, so hopefully we'll try and keep that going. And I think that might be it. Um, this is my wonderful team uh, at John Hazeldean's wedding. Um, it really is teamwork, and I think you'll all probably develop and be members of teams. And I've enjoyed very much being uh, involved in teams that are a real mixture of basic scientists and clinicians. So Liz Sapi, I couldn't have done any of my neutrophil work without her. Mark Fosteris, who is a trauma surgeon. Um, he's actually a military trauma surgeon because Birmingham's also the... Uh, Royal Centre for Defence Medicine, so I do my trauma work with him. Chris is a burn surgeon. Uh, Daisy's a, a trainee at the moment. She's doing a PhD with us. Thomas Jackson is a geriatrician. And the three people in yellow are the basic scientists who did the work. So thank you for your attention. Thank you.